Uh, I'm Brock Pierce. I'll be emceeing the uh, the casino track here today. Glad to see so many of you. And we've got to uh, we get to start the day with I think the most iconic company in the space, uh, Playtica. Most of you should know is the first major acquisition, which then led to uh, the acquisition of Buffalo Studios and the WSOP from EA. So excited to be uh, starting off the morning with uh, one of the best companies in the sector. Okay, good morning, everyone. Do you hear me? Everybody hear me? Okay, cool. So first of all, can I just get a raise of hands? Who's from the industry, from the niche? Okay, most of, who's not from the niche? Okay, who's uh, actually a developer or working in a studio? Okay, and who are just supplying services to uh, the niche? Okay, cool. So just wanted to see who, who I have in the crowd. So thanks very much for uh, waking up on time. Uh, I had a hard time waking up, uh, Amsterdam and all. Um, and uh, so we're going to start off today. What I was hoping to do uh, was give everybody an overview of the social casino market, kind of how Atika looks at the world uh, in 214. And uh, hopefully it'll give you some insight as to uh, what's going on in the market and uh, we'll give you some tools for 214. Um, so a little bit about the company. The company uh, considered today the global leader uh, in the category. We were founded in uh, 2010. Uh, we have about eight games today. Uh, we're on 12 platforms. Uh, we are, did I lose it? Okay, there we go. Uh, we, are on, um, uh, we are on 12 platforms, like I said, big platforms that you all know, and some of the secondary platforms as well. Uh, we're lo located in Tel Aviv. Uh, I think my audio is one, two. Yeah, are we good? Okay. Um, we're, we're headquartered at Tel Aviv. The company was founded in Tel Aviv uh, and acquired by Caesars Interactive Entertainment uh, in 2010. Uh, we have a great story. The company was acquired uh, under a year after it was established. Uh, Caesars Interactive Entertainment which is a subsidiary of Caesars Entertainment, some of you may know. Uh, acquired Playtica uh, about 11 months after it was established. Great success deal for everyone on both sides. Uh, today we have 550 employees globally, uh, and that's growing, so quite a monster right now. A little bit about kind of our KPIs, our big numbers, our KPIs. Um, so Q3 2013, we generated $75 million of revenue. Uh, we can't yet talk about Q4, but we had a good quarter, or maybe even a very good quarter. Um, and we are, by definition, the largest in the category right now. A uh, little bit about the product. So most of you should know the uh, Slotomania product. That's our flagship product. That was, it's actually not our first product. Our first product was uh, uh, right on the right side of the dice game, but was lost on the Russian platform. Still having some audio? It's when I turn my head. I won't turn my head anymore. Uh, maybe I'll like that. Um, okay, so uh, Slotomania, like I said, and uh, the rest of our uh, uh, no products right now. Yeah, let's just switch. Okay, that'll be easier. There we go. Much better. Okay, great. Um, our eight products right now, we do have other products in line, uh, and we're going to make some interesting announcements in the next few weeks. Uh, hopefully, uh, you'll hear them very loudly. Okay, so Playtica, actually App Annie released a report uh, a couple weeks ago. Uh, we are the number seven uh, top grossing uh, game all year round on iOS and Android. Uh, and we are the number eight grossing developer in the US uh, in uh, 2014, uh, 2013 as well. Uh, we are the number three top grossing developer on Facebook after Zynga and King. Most people don't know this fact, uh, but we're proud to be there. Hopefully, we'll move up a step or two down the line. Okay, so enough about the company. The idea was to give you some context as to who we are and what we do uh, and why what we're going to be talking about right now uh, is relevant. Okay, so we're going to talk about how big the market is. Uh, there's quite a debate internally about how big the market is right now. Uh, there are several research firms that discuss uh, the size of the market. Uh, we believe that uh, the data is 
pretty good. Uh, it's very hard to assess whether the numbers are accurate or not, uh, but we are, uh, we are quoting these numbers and we are using them for our business decisions uh, and uh, I'm gonna talk a bit about, about them right now. So super data research based out of New York, I think they even have a representative here today, uh, say that the market is about $2.3 billion in 2013. Uh, most of the market is in North America, uh, a little bit in Europe, Western Europe specifically, Asia, Latin America, and the rest of the world. Uh, remember, this is a niche or a market that didn't exist a few years. It's quite amazing that we can generate $2.3 billion of revenue uh, in a few years. Social casino players. Um, there are approximately 200 million people across the globe playing social casino right now. Um, the research says that by 2016, there's gonna be 269 million people playing. Uh, that's a large increase. Uh, the point being here is that there are 60 million plus social casino players that are up for grabs. That means people who have never played social casino before are gonna be playing social casino in the next few years. Uh, the question is, whose games are they gonna be playing? And who are they gonna be paying? And that's kind of the one thing, that's an opportunity that everybody should be looking at. Okay, who's who and so what? So this is just my, probably my favorite slide uh, in the presentation. Um, I'm, we look at the world through a lens where we see four types of contenders in the social casino category. Uh, there's the offline slot manufacturers. Uh, you should know these guys, IGT, WMS, Aristocrat. Uh, there are a few more as well. Um, these are the companies that are actually manufacturing the offline sl um, slots. Uh, you walk into a casino in the US and in Europe, you'll look at the actual logos on the slot machines, you'll see these logos. Uh, these are companies that have been in the uh, slot space for years, some of them decades. Uh, so they know slots very well. Uh, and they're probably our biggest contender today. Then there's the offline casino operators, uh, Caesars Interactive Entertainment, which is where we fall, uh, MGM Resorts, and Rust Street Gaming, which was uh, uh, a deal that was done a few months ago as well. These are the companies that are actually own and operate the physical casinos, the real estate in which the games are played uh, in the real money world. Um, there uh, hasn't been much movement other than these three companies, uh, but there's, we're gonna talk about why it's relevant in a minute. Then there's the online real money gaming guys. Uh, 888, uh, Novomatic, Ladbrokes, Bwin, Playtech, uh, all of you uh, guys should know some of these names. Um, these guys have been in the market. It's interesting to see that none of these companies have really broken into the second or first tier yet. Uh, we do believe they have a strong a uh, uh, chance of doing so at some point. And then what we call the purely social, uh, these are companies much like Playtica, uh, who were kind of born and raised uh, in the social gaming category. Um, some really big names like Zynga, uh, and Big Fish Games, and Storm 8, and some smaller size. This is obviously not a comprehensive slide, I'm just giving examples of. Uh, there are hundreds of other companies. Okay, so why is this relevant to look uh, at the world in this context. Um, mainly because each type of company gives, uh, has a different competitive advantage. Uh, the offline slot manufacturers, they have proven content. Okay, these are guys who are companies who have been trying uh, their content on the casino floors for years. They know what content works and what content doesn't work. And that's a big competitive advantage. The offline casino operators like ourselves, there's brand recognition and there's the potential for cross-promotion. Uh, and the cross-promotion uh, uh, hasn't been really tried yet. Uh, brand recognition, when we launched our Caesars Casino product, uh, the brand recognition was very obvious. It helped us market the product very easily. Online real money ga gaming, uh, these guys have digital gaming experience in the casino niche. Uh, these guys have been running casino products online for a decade or more. Uh, they uh, like I said, they really haven't broken into the tier one or tier two companies yet. Um, it's a whole debate why, we can talk about it after if anybody really wants to discuss it, uh, but we, we believe they, they have the potential. And then purely social, these are companies that have agility, innovation, and or regional focus. Um, and this is the way we look at the world, this is the way we look at our competition, 
Uh, and I think it's uh, very relevant for everyone, or I hope. Okay, a little bit about the pyramid structure of the, of the niche. Uh, on top we have the three companies that hold about 40% of the market share, Caesars, IGT, and Zynga. IGT being uh, Double Down Casino, um, Caesars. The market research says that we hold about 15%, uh, IGT about 12%, Zynga about 11%, and that fluctuates, but more or less approximately 40% of the market share. And then we have a few other companies kind of in the second tier uh, that own 25% of the market share. If you look at these, these are either uh, companies coming from the uh, purely social category that we talked about before uh, and or the real uh, and or the offline slot manufacturers. Um, very interesting to see these guys here. And then last but not least, there's the rest. Um, there are hundreds if not thousands of companies uh, in the category right now. There's a lot of money going on uh, in the category and everybody's uh, rushing into the niche. Uh, it's not an easy niche to be in and a lot of these companies uh, are, are um, going to have a hard time. Some of them are already doing pretty well, uh, but again, to break into the second and first tier is going to be very hard. Okay, so why is that relevant? Uh, because what's happening in the last few years is consolidation. So the market's going through consolidation. Uh, <coughs> the big guys are buying the little guys, and this is true for gaming in general. Uh, what you see up here is a trend line of the amount of transactions happening uh, in the gaming industry, not necessarily the social casino industry over the last few years. The trend line is obvious. A lot of big companies uh, are buying uh, smaller companies. The democratization of technology has allowed uh, the market to grow substantially over the last few years. Platforms, iOS, Android, Facebook, and a lot of other platforms have kind of opened the market uh, to the globe very quickly. Uh, and there's a lot of money rushing into the category and that's why this is happening. Uh, just some examples of deals in the social casino niche uh, over the last few years. Um, there's our deal where Caesars Entertainment uh, acquired Playtica. Uh, when we acquired Buffalo Studios, we did the WSOP as well. Uh, there are a few other deals. IGT bought Double Down for $500 million. Uh, there's been some recent deals which are interesting. Uh, the Endemol investment in Plumbee. It's not an M&A per se, uh, but it's an interesting deal because if you think of why Endemol, uh, which is an entertainment company with content, would be investing uh, in, uh, uh, in Plumbee. Um, you'll kind of figure out some of the stuff that's going on in the industry, some of the questions, branded content versus non-branded content, et cetera. That's probably one of those moves. Um, some of these are really successful deals, some are less, uh, but there's definitely been a lot of acquisitions and there's gonna be some more. Okay, a little bit about the Asian opportunity or what I call the regional opportunity. So if you look at the market, the market's really made up of 70% of the money is coming in for three, from three countries, Canada, US, and Australia. 30% uh, of, of the rest of the revenues are coming from either Western Europe or what we call the rest of the world. Uh, there really hasn't been a true penetration into the emerging markets, Latin America, Asia, uh, there's definitely an opportunity. Uh, the gaming markets specifically in, in Asia are humongous. Uh, if we look at uh, what's going on uh, in terms of revenue, so Asia Pacific, which actually includes Australia, please note, uh, generated $25 billion of revenue last year. Uh, in the gaming niche, we're not talking social casino. Okay, where uh, the North American market only generated $22 billion. So actually Asia is already a larger gaming market than the US or North America. And then we'll look at casino revenues in Asia, and this is a, this is a slide that, I, uh, that most people are surprised by. Um, this is, uh, comes from The Economist magazine from a few months ago. So these are real money casinos uh, uh, in Asia, and if you look at Macau on top, generated $38 billion of revenue versus Vegas at seven. Okay, so there's a four or five fold uh, size in Macau. Which to us what it says is, is that there's a, there's a large market in Asia who are enjoying casino games. Not necessarily the same games that the West are playing, but there's definitely a market. Uh, and it's an opportunity. And if you look down the line after Vegas, Singapore, South Korea, Malaysia, Philippines, Cambodia, these are all large markets. 
uh, definitely larger than the Western markets. The opportunities there, social casino is not yet broken into Asia, not really, uh, and it, I, we think it will. Okay, so mobile is a subject that everybody, everybody's talking about. There are conferences around specifically mobile gaming, uh, and the trend lines are obvious, uh, but they're very relevant for our niche as well. Uh, Playtika is a very mobile-focused company today, um, and we're doing very well on mobile, like I showed in the beginning of the opening slides. Um, this is a slide I like to show. It's hard to see the numbers. I apologize about that. But if you look, uh, the orange are tablets, the blue smartphones, the red are personal computers. Uh, and we're somewhere right around here is 213, for those of you who can't see. Um, the trend is obvious. Mobile where is where everything is. Uh, it doesn't mean the other platforms are dying, um, but it means with, with the growth is coming from mobile. Uh, mobile gaming revenues, uh, again, this is an interesting slide, $13 billion in 2013, more or less. Again, if you look at uh, Asia, $6 billion. If you look at uh, North America, $3 billion. Okay, uh, platforms. So platforms are a big headache. Whoever doesn't understand why they're a big headache, start, start looking at it. Uh, there are multiple platforms in the market. Uh, it's a very fragmented market. Distribution is hard and complex because it drills down and makes companies like us and any gaming company uh, have to focus on the technology in a way uh, which has foresight. And having long-term foresight as to what platforms are going to be relevant is hard. Uh, and having the agility in the technology to be able to distribute your games across multiple platforms at once is hard. Um, and I think whoever cracks that well, or as good as possible, uh, has a good chance uh, to succeed in the market. Uh, there's mobile, there's web, there's TV and console, there are handhelds which aren't really relevant for our uh, niche at this point, uh, but there's some interesting, uh, interesting things going on in the platform specifically uh, for you guys who are in mobile specific uh, uh, niche. Uh, look at what's going on in, in Asia with WhatsApp, oh sorry, with WeChat and Line and Kakao, and you'll see that there's, uh, we, we consider them a platform today, uh, and there's some really interesting stuff going on in Asia, and there's a lot of other platforms kind of emerging. We recently launched on Windows Phone. Uh, we're doing well, I'm gonna give uh, Windows a uh, uh, two thumbs up. We're doing well on Windows Phone, so uh, not, not much of the market is kind of focusing on them well, but we're happy. We're very happy, actually. Okay, so this is a controversial slide. Uh, and my answer to the question is controversial as well. So people are talking about convergence of real money and social. And our answer is no. Uh, and a lot of people are going to argue with me, and I'm, I bet a lot of you are going to come after, after me for this later on. Uh, but this is how we see the world. Uh, there is no convergence between real money and social casino. We believe it's two different types of businesses. Uh, it's two different types of players. Uh, it's a different mindset. The products are different. Uh, and we really don't see any convergence happening, at least not in 214, but we really don't see it happening, period. Uh, it's kind of the reason that the real money gambling guys, if you remember my slide from before, haven't really hit the top tier uh, of the companies. It's a different company. It's a different company. It's a different mindset. We're much more a social gaming company than we are a real money gambling company. And uh, that's, that's kind of how we see the world. So from our perspective, convergence is not happening. Okay, content. Uh, so this is kind of a drill down into the category uh, and it's not really macro macroeconomic insight, uh, but content is very relevant. And the reason we said, again, we go back to the contender slide uh, that why content is relevant because proven content is one of the biggest competitive advantages in the market. Um, so I won't go deeply into, so for those of you who don't know, most of the money in the niche is in slots. Poker and slots, but more slots. Uh, the other table games aren't doing very well in terms of monetization these days yet. Uh, so slots are part art, part, part science. Um, and the guys from the slots industry, the offline slot manufacturers, have uh, the perfect playground to test their slots offline. 
They have thousands and thousands of machines that have been on the floor. Some are better than others. Those that are better than others get to get pushed onto Social Casino. The likelihood of the users enjoying uh, the game is high. Uh, so proven content is important. Um, we actually don't have that. We're one of the only companies in the category uh, that doesn't have any access to proven content. Our content is all unique, it's all developed in-house. Uh, but we were able to crack that, but that's very hard to crack. We don't see many others cracking that yet. Okay, familiar yet diverse content. So one of the things I see all the time as a VP of BizDev and companies coming, coming to us and they're showing me mashups, slot machines that are a match three or slot machines that are something else. And we really don't think that's what the players want. Uh, the players want something familiar. They want to play a slot game. They don't want to play a mashup. Uh, I'm sure there is a sub-segment of people looking to play a mashup, but not the bulk of the market. So people want a real and familiar experience, not a mashup. And then, of course, feature diversity. Uh, feature diversity slots are complex. For those of you who don't understand that slots are complex, they look like this machine that's running reels, and all you have to do is press spin, and then it'll work. That's wrong. Uh, there's mathematics, there's art, there's psychology. It's very relevant. Uh, so feature diversity in your slots is relevant as well. Okay, freshness. So this is something we do very well, probably the best in the market. Um, players expect your content to be fresh, meaning that every few days, weeks, months, they expect, expect to see a new slot machine. Playtika pushes out four to five new slot machines per month. Uh, and now each slot machine takes us three to four months of work. So just think of the roadmap that we have. We have a slots factory uh, in the company, and there are about 100 and some people working just on our slots all the time. And we push out these slots uh, almost a little more than every week. It's very relevant, it's very hard, it's very cost intensive, uh, but it's what the players expect. And we hope to set the standard in terms of the amount of content be being pushed out. We see that as one of our largest competitive advantages. Okay, and then branded content. So this is kind of a subject I like. Um, so if you go to the offline world and the online world, um, you'll see a lot of slot machines that are branded. We have an Elvis slot. We have a Love Boat slot. Uh, there's a big debate, uh, at least internally, I don't know, in the industry, but I think in the industry as well, whether this is worth it or not. It's just what the users are looking for. Uh, IGT might not like me for that comment because they're doing a lot of branded content, but uh, we'll see. Um, so we pay a lot of money to brands like Elvis, like the Love Boat, to the, for the right to use their brand on our slot machine. Uh, does it prove itself in terms of ROI? Questionable, questionable. There are, out of the hundred and some slot machines we have live on Slotomania right now, uh, the really successful ones are actually the ones we did in-house. Uh, not necessarily the branded ones. So it's good from a market positioning perspective when the clients come or when your users come and they see branded content, uh, it might give them the feeling or the subconscious feeling that this is a company that has uh, the ability to bring a big brand in and thus it's trustworthy. Uh, but from a pure ROI perspective and from a gameplay perspective, we're not really sure if this is something that we should be doing or not. Um, so. I'll be, I'll be interested to see if there anybody else has any kind of uh, insight into that. Okay, so just to summarize uh, what I've said and kind of what we think is gonna be relevant in 2014, uh, the market will continue to grow. Uh, there's room for growth. Um, the question is who will take that market share? Uh, the current leaders will continue to lead the pack. Um, top tier in the pyramid, second tier in the pyramid, uh, the guys at, uh, at the bottom of the pyramid are going to have a hard time. CPI costs are growing. We all know that. Um, content freshness is cost intensive. Uh, hopefully uh, you know that today. Uh, it's, so we think the leaders are going to continue to lead the pack. The market will continue to consolidate. Uh, we are consistently looking for M&As. We know our competitors, our large competitors, are looking for uh, M&As as well. Uh, we think the market will continue to consolidate. Okay, there's gonna be a land grab in Asia and other regional markets. Uh, if you have a product 
that is doing well in Asia or in Latin America in the social Filipino niche, talk to me. Okay, uh, mobile will continue to dominate growth, it's kind of an obvious one. Platform fragmentation is gonna get worse. Um, if anybody has researched what's going on in China in terms of platforms, you'll see it's a whole different planet than what's going on in the Western world. And we think that's gonna get more and more complex. China is, is a very specific case, uh, but it's gonna get worse also in the Western world as well. Convergence will not happen. Um, if anybody wants to beat me up after this, let me know for that comment. And content will remain the king. Content is a critical factor of success in the social Filipinos category. That's it, thank you very much for your time. <laughs> and if there are any questions, uh, I'll be happy to answer. Yeah, go ahead. Let's uh, just get the mic if that's possible. Project for your uh, Ruger uh, question. Um, so Double Down seems to have much higher lifetime values you know, per user than the, than any of the slots apps. Mm -hmm. uh, yet it's not a pure slots game. But receive wisdom is the slots make the money. So I wonder if you have any thoughts on that. Okay. So uh, I mean, we have a we have a full casino suite as well uh, under Caesar's Casino. Uh, it's doing very well. But people in if you if you look at what's going on in the category itself, when a user plays. Uh, uh, goes into a full casino suite. Uh, most of the traffic is actually going to the slots game in the in the casino suite itself. Uh, they're being the other games are being played, but the monetization and the real gameplay is happening in the slots category. Um, again, not completely, not a hundred percent, but that's where the bulk is. Other questions? Go ahead. Hi, uh, Josh. That's a, it's a good question, and it's, it's, it's a question we ask ourselves regularly. Um, uh, should we be using this branded content to drive in new traffic? Um, and we have done that, what if, if, you, if anybody knows uh, Slotomania specifically, uh, you have to level up to get to the fresh content at the end. What we've been doing is actually putting some of this uh, branded content up front, so when you open up the game for the first time, it'll be there in front of your face. Uh, and that's kind of our attempt at uh, having this as a user acquisition tool. Um, again, <coughs> it's an ROI-driven business, uh, and we look at making money, and if this branded content won't prove itself over time, uh, we might not do it again. Um, please correct me if I'm wrong, mm -hmm. uh, but you have only uh, poker and slots so far, right? So if you look at our uh, uh, Caesars Casino product, it's actually a full casino suite. We also have, and we of course we have Bingo. Uh, okay. We have a very large Bingo studio in the U.S. which we acquire. R what about Blackjack and Roulette? Is it, is it something that you... So we, so we have Blackjack and Roulette in our casino product, in our full casino product. Uh, again, they're not monetizing at this point. Uh, so, so you say ahead. that they are not monet monetized so well like the other games? Yes, they're not monetizing as well. They are monetizing, but they're not monetizing as well. Uh, they're a good for the variety, the experience of variety in the game, uh, but not necessarily as a revenue driver. Okay, thank you. Hi, hello, I'm Anton uh, Tomic. Do people play slots also in Caesar's Casino more than they do other games? Yes, the answer is a very blunt yes. Uh, Caesar's Casino is a slot-focused game. Uh, even though it's a full casino suite, uh, a lot of the traffic is in, uh, Caesar's, uh, is in the slots category. Can I take it? Uh, I'm going to go here. Go for it. Go over this. Uh, you, you sort of invited us to beat you up on the conversions question, so uh, I'll give a slight try. Sure. There's a slide on content, and you were talking about proven content. About which content? Pr proven content. Yes. Uh, that seemed to be in, in contrast or conflict with the idea of, okay. of convergence. So, so convergence, convergence is a large subject, and I think the main subject in convergence is 
are the players from Social Casino going to be pushed into real money to play real money? Uh, and the content is it's a different subject. So we think that content is something that can cross uh, the multiple types of casino games, real money, online, offline, social, uh, et cetera. But the, what, when we say convergence, no, is we think the players are different players. Uh, the mindset is a different mindset. Uh, our players are coming to be entertained. And it's not the same thing as coming to gamble. Uh, it's a whole different thing. So on a content level, yeah, definitely there's going to be shift over from here to there. Definitely. Any other questions? Last question? What about iOS versus Android? OK, uh, good question. Um, we love both. Uh, we're doing well on both. Um, we all know, uh, I think whoever really kind of lives in the industry knows that iOS drives a higher, higher KPIs in general. Uh, but the bulk of the market today is in Android in terms of scale. Uh, market owns most, the, uh, Android owns most of the market and it's continuing to own, own most of the market. It's important to be there. So we love both though. We're happy with both platforms. Well, and a anyone that knows me knows I gotta ask the question, what about Bitcoin? Okay. <laughs> a little bit of self-promotion can't hurt, right, Brock? Um, so Bitcoin, Bitcoin. Um, the truth is we haven't really uh, debated that yet. Uh, on our roadmap, uh, but considering our conversation from about 40 minutes ago, we're going to, uh, thanks to you, and uh, we'll be happy to kind of see if, uh, if this is relevant for us. Any other question? Hi, my name is uh, Daniel from uh, GTH uh, Gaming. Um, you say no to convergence, and I'm interested in your view what the land-based do you expect uh, B2B relationships with mm -hmm. content providers to mm -hmm. see them develop their own content? Interesting. Uh, interesting question and uh, definitely relevant question. Um, so the land-based providers um, have all opened their eyes. Uh, the big ones have, uh, are already in, or one big one, Caesars, MGM, Grass Street Gaming, which just did a deal. Um, yeah, I think, I think everybody's going to, the land-based guys are going to be spending money on social casino. How they're going to be entering the market, uh, I don't know. There's going to be some uh, white label solutions. You can go downstairs. Uh, you'll see some of those as well. Uh, there's going to be some B2B relationships. Uh, it's not going to be what happened in the real money gambling thing, and the real money gambling ca category. We think B2B and social is a whole different thing. Uh, we don't, I don't really know that it exists today on scale. Uh, if anybody can prove me wrong, I'd be happy to. Um, but the real, but the land-based casinos, they're going to be spending money in social. Um, we don't think they're going to be developing their own product. Uh, it's something that, they, it's a different company. Uh, it's like asking an airplane company to make a house. Uh, it's not necessarily the same, uh, the same thing. Uh, so there'll, there'll probably be room for providers, third-party providers to help land-based casinos get online in social, either via M&A or via B2B deals. Any other questions? What about, uh, uh, on that note, do you have uh, any real money aspirations? What do you think of things like Facebook permitting real money gaming on the platform of Facebook? Okay, so, no. <laughs> That's where it ends. We're not, like I said, we have a, a we, our, our mindset is we're not a real money gambling company. We don't know how to do real money gambling. We don't know the clientele. We don't know the technology. Uh, it's not something that we have any aspirations for. Uh, we much more have aspirations of like any social gaming company. Uh, maybe we'll move into new niches down the line, uh, but social gaming niches, not the real money gambling stuff. Hi, Clinton. Um, Hi, Clinton. Come actually coming from the real money online side and seeing the changes in the regulated market coming and the talks, especially in the UK, of potentially applying the same rules to social as they do to real money. How do you see that? Um, I, don't, I don't see that yet. Uh, it's a debate that's going on. Um, we'll see. We, I don't really have a good answer for you, unfortunately. Uh, time will tell. Last chance for questions. If not, uh, thank you for an excellent uh, presentation. This was a great way to start the morning.
Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you.